Let's take a look at the uh, cold side of the engine now, please. So where would you like to begin here? Well, I'd like to begin with the uh, cylinder, Lou. And you can see the, uh, the piston with its piston rings and the cylinder liner. Uh, that's pretty much carryover from uh, the 2007 engine. It was working very well in 2007, and we've not needed to make significant changes. We've made a few improvements in that area to improve fuel economy and uh, emission control. At the top of the cylinder head, you'll see the valve train. And uh, the good news there is that we've retained the 07 uh, valve train unchanged with the original uh, camshaft that drives the valve train, uh, as well as the integrated brake, compression brake. That's all carryover from 2007. Okay. Maybe the most interesting feature of this view is the fuel injector. Right in the middle of the head, you'll see the XPI fuel injector. This actually contains pressurized fuel throughout the operation of the engine. You see the solenoid at the top of the injector. The engine control model can, uh, module can fire the injector uh, up to five times per combustion cycle to produce up to five injection events. So a pilot injection, a main injection, maybe some post injections. These are all designed to improve uh, performance and fuel economy um, and are considerably quieter in combustion noise thanks to the XPI fuel system. Okay. And where would we go next? Well, I think looking at the uh, intake system, uh, you'll notice that this side of the engine has been freed up of, of quite a bit of real estate uh, with the removal of the HPI fuel system. This has allowed us to design a new intake manifold system using computational fluid dynamics so that we can optimize the flow of both air and EGR into the engine cylinders. So the intake on the 2010 engine is more or less an elongated opening that runs the length of the engine. This allows us to put what we call a log manifold onto that side of the engine. And with the work we've done with the computer, we're able to pretty much guarantee uniform distribution of EGR and air to all cylinders of the engine. OK, all right. And would you uh, talk about the XPI fuel pump? Yeah, the, the fuel system, the heart of the fuel system is really down there at the bottom left, driven by the gear train, and that's the uh, high pressure fuel pump. This produces fuel that's pressurized to about 35,000 psi, sometimes higher, and that pressurized fuel is fed to the rail, which is at the top of the engine, and from the rail, you can see how it's distributed to each of the six cylinders you, uh, through the high pressure connector that goes through the cylinder head. One of the keys there, too, you'll notice with the cylinder head that the uh, high pressure connector travels through the casting directly to the injector. And there's never any communication between the lubricating oil and the fuel. So were there to be a fuel leak, it would leak to the outside and give witness of the problem it could be dealt with. And there's never a risk of mixing fuel and oil. OK, excellent. So we've talked about the features of the engine. What are the benefits? Well, the benefits, uh, quite simply, Lou, are first of all, fuel economy. We believe we have fuel economy leadership today with the ISX-15, and we're fairly confident we can continue that in 2010. Uh, performance, uh, great throttle response, great drivability, thanks to the variable geometry turbocharger and the uh, integrated controls. Durability, this is uh, certainly a million mile engine. I think we've We've seen that now that we've been in production with it since 2002 with cooled EGR. So um, as I think about the emission cycle changes, Steve, we, uh, we had a change in 2002, uh, introduced EGR, then in 2007, the diesel particulate filter, and now in 2010, meeting the near zero emission requirements. As you reflect on those emission cycle changes, what takeaways do you have? Well, first of all, Lou, I, I think the team back at uh, Cummins Technical Center in Columbus is, uh, is outstanding. Uh, and that team really has been together all the way through that process. About 150 engineers uh, started with the O2 product back in uh, 98, 99 time frame, delivered the O2 product, developed the O7 product, and now have stayed together to develop the 10 product. So. There's a lot, of, a lot of learning in the team, a lot of capability, and a lot of good tools and methods that they've developed. Um, but from an engine perspective, I think the key is evolution. 
Uh, we've got a great base engine in the ISX. Uh, we've retained its qualities. We've, uh, we've not really changed the, the crank, the bearings, connecting rods, the block, uh, co lube and cooling system. Uh, so we've been able to retain and build on the, uh, the core of the engine, which is, uh, in this case, is just so strong and, and such a good engine. That leaves us then evolving the emission controls year by year, which we've been able to do. And I'd say the other, the other key is to start early uh, with the technology development um, and then move to product development with the technology really in place, very solid, and then we have a great uh, product development program. Okay. Thank you very much for being with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Our message can be summarized in this manner. Our products for 2010 will deliver better performance, better fuel economy, and better reliability every mile that you'll drive them. Cummins is ready for 2010. Thank you for listening.